This is today's bingo card. Take a screenshot if you want. Grace is our, also put that bingo card in the chat box. If you are the first to get bingo, that's five across in any direction, diagonally, vertically, horizontally, whatever, send a message to Grace or Christina in the chat box that you have gotten a bingo and that awards you the right to choose either to ask my mom who's here as well, any question you want about me, or um, you can have one of the co-hosts pick any random hall at the American Museum of Natural History and I'll tell you a fun, cool personal story slash anecdote. That is our bingo of the day. Uh, we got a bingo yesterday, but they failed to report it. So didn't really, didn't even count basically. So uh, Christina, are you here? Where's Christina? There you I'm are. Here. Hi, Christina. Um, are you excited for Shark Day? I know it's not our normal dino-centric talk, but you know, sharks are amazing. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. It's Shark Saturday. Shark I love Saturday. our alliterative series mm -hmm. of, uh, of special topics. Yep. Absolutely. If we're not alliterating, why are we even doing this? That's what I want to know. Right, right. So, all right, let's start with our dino of the day. Per usual, every single day we have a specific animal that I task you guys to make beautiful artistic renditions of during our talk. And at the end, we're gonna share them all out. Today, again, we're talking about sharks. So guess what? We don't have a dino of the day. We have a shark of the day. And for my money, it doesn't get much weirder than our friend right here. Uh, obviously, that is the crazy jaw, one of the craziest jaws, set of teeth I've ever seen. It's called a tooth whorl. This is, ladies, does actually, do you guys know? Does anyone know what shark this is? Christina, do you know? Can you tell us? Is it the helicoprion? It is the helicoprion. Heck yeah. It's got that vertical tooth whirl. Uh, tooth whirl. Tooth, tooth whirl. Uh, here's another one. Now, Jada will talk about this in a little bit because she is our special shark guest. Two, uh, sharks are cartilaginous. So outside of their teeth, they don't have really, really hard bones like we do. So we've only found tooth whirls from this guy. And based on the size of these tooth whorls, well, first of all, we didn't know for a while where they went, like this was one hypothesis, maybe. But based on the size of the tooth whorls, we think that Helicoprion may be up to 30 feet long. So like a pretty big shark eating all sorts of different stuff, living at the time just before the dinosaurs. So Christina, I love the way you said the name. I always mispronounce it. Can you tell us this guy's name one more time? Helicoprion? Helicoprion. Hella. Coprion, hello means round or whirl, that's why, and cop, pater, PT, pater means um, wing. So like helicopter means whirl or circular wing. Pterosaurs, winged uh, lizard. This is helicoprion, winged, well not winged, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> tooth whirl, crazy shark guy. So this is our dino, not dino of the day. I'm excited to see our drawings. Remember, I would love it if you name them. So whatever you think this guy's name should be. I th I'm expecting something better than just Bob. Not that there's anything wrong with Bob. This guy's got too much personality for a three letter name. All right. Um, I should also mention slash announce, if you didn't know already, that we have a very special shark expert guest for, for today. You guys know her, you love her, my friend, your favorite, ladies and gentlemen, Jada Elcock. <laughs> so Jada, you're here yeah. pretty much every day with us. Yeah. Um, but today you're here very specifically to talk about sharks because you just got into grad school to study them. Is that yes. correct? So yes, I will be at the University of Washington in the School of Aquatic and Fishery Sciences. And I'm very, very excited to start working with sharks because I live in the middle of the desert and I haven't had a chance yet. So, <laughs> so we're going to give you a chance to tell us like all about sharks a little bit, but just off the top, just briefly, like why do you like sharks? I feel like they're so heavily misunderstood because of like movies and like bad media like they get such a bad reputation mm -hmm. but they're super super cool they're crazy important for the environment and if like sharks were to go extinct it would just cause like a ripple effect and affect literally everything on the earth and there a lot of them i think like a fourth of all shark species are endangered so like i want to be one of those people that like helps figure out what we can do to make sure that they don't go extinct because okay. they're awesome and sharks, you're right, sharks have been around for about 450 million years before the dinosaurs, right? And that basic body plan has been around. It would be a travesty if we're the final reason why sharks go extinct, or any types of shark go extinct for that matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about sharks in a little bit. But per usual, we get this ball rolling by playing dino or not a dino. Now, we always have our special guest if and when we have one play. So 
Jada, I know that you are not a dinosaur expert, although you were probably more, than, more so than most, seeing as how you're in Dino 101 with us almost every single day. So Jada, are you ready to play Dino or not a Dino? As ready as I can be. Okay, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with this game, it is very simple. I'm going to read the name of 10 different animals, some of which are actual dinosaurs, some of which are names that we have totally made up. And by we, I mean me and Christina, uh, comedic genius, Christina Gustavich. So I'm gonna read you the name. You just have to say dino or not a dino. If you want to phone a friend by looking at everyone going yes, no, shaking their heads in the chat box, cool. If you want to send Jada a message with yes or no, feel free. Jada, let's do this. Are you ready to play? Yes, let's go. All right. Your first, maybe a dino, is Gobi Hadros. Gobi Hadros. And again, I can spell any of these. I can use them in a sentence if that's helpful. Just let me know. I'm going to go with yes. Go is with Hadros. You're going with yes? Yes. Final answer. Yes. Yes, that is a dinosaur. Gobi Hadros is a type of hadrosaur that was discovered in the Gobi Desert. Uh, pretty inventive name, eh? All right, so you're one of one off to a rip-roaring start. Second, Loadon. Loadon. Yes, I can spell this one. Yeah, spell that one. L-O-W-E-D-O-N, Loadon. Mm, I'm gonna go with no. You are correct, Loadon is not a dinosaur. You are one for one, well done. That's right, two, that would be two for two, but well, yes. One for, you're right. What am I, <laughs> math, how does math work? All right, so <laughs> what, you are, you've gotten two right, we've only done two, here we go. Uh, someone please drop the Zoom room code in the Insta chat for me. Thank you, Grace. Number three, Gracilaceratops. Gracilaceratops? Gracilaceratops. I'm going to go with yes because I really want that to be a name. Yes, that is a name. That absolutely is yes. a dinosaur. It means slender horn. Uh, Gracilla, like gracile means, well, like less heavily built. Uh, and it's actually really closely related to our Protoceratops friend right here. It looks a lot like him. Similar size, medium to large size dog. Gracilaceratops is a dinosaur. Jada Elcock, you are three for three. Number four, Zibby. Zibby? Z-B-Y, Zibby. No. <laughs> Christina's <laughs> book is slowly eating her face. <laughs> Zibby, no, Zibby is a dinosaur. It is are a you serious? Sauropod. It is a type of small sauropod, yep. long neck, long tail, Z-B-Y. Zibby. So I feel like that's not even how words work. Like, it should be it's a not. vowel. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's how they work for us today. Okay. okay. Um, you've gotten three right, one wrong. You're doing great. Again, uh, you only have to get six out of 10 to win. D minus, very low bar. Next, Entelosaurus. Ooh. Entelosaurus. Um, crap. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with no. Wow, crushing it. You were correct. Antelosaurus is not a dinosaur. Made that one up. You've gotten four correct, one incorrect. Uh, I don't know if you've started to notice a theme at all, but maybe some of you had. Next, you ready? Here we go. Number five, I'm sorry, number six, Baskintonia. Baskintonia. Hmm. I feel like I want to say yes. Are you though? Yes, I am saying yes. yes. You are saying yes. Uh, no, sorry. Basket oh. is not a dinosaur. You're now four correct, two incorrect. That's okay. You're doing, you're doing pretty well. This one's a toughie. And if you need me to spell it, let me know. Erkutu or Erkutu. Yes, please spell that. E R K E. T U. Erkutu. Christina looks very confused. <laughs> er don't, don't I've been, mind my face. See on Instagram really don't read it in my yes, face. No, yes, no. Um, oh, it's spelled Zibby, by the way, wrong. It's just Z-B-Y. There's no Z-I in there. It's just Z-B-Y. Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with yes. You're going to go with yes, and you have gotten that one correct. You've gotten five correct now. Erkutu is arguably has the longest neck of any, like, to body ratio of any dinosaur ever. Incredibly, like, Ooh. skinny, stretched out neck. Erkutu, all right. Five correct, two incorrect. You have three more. Tigersaurus. 
Tigersaurus? Tigersaurus. No. Are you sure? Yes. Surely sure. Y yes. Okay. Have you noticed there may be a theme for some of these yet? Has anyone noticed the theme in many of ours? Are you just sticking animals in with like a Saurus name? No, uh, but you are correct. Tiger Saurus is not a dino. You've not, okay. now gotten six, which means you are going to win regardless. We do have two more. We're going to see how well you do. Um, oh, wow. Talarurus. Talarurus? T-A-L-A-R-U-R-U-S. Talarurus. That's fun. I'm going to go with yes. You are correct again. I know the theme, but I don't want to say it until you say your last one. Okay. I have no idea what the theme just is. Just figured it out. You just figured out. Grace has figured out the theme. Do you want to hear some of the non-dinos again so you can have like a hint as to this theme? Yeah, that, would, that would be helpful. Say the non-dinos. Okay. Yeah, sure. so some of our incorrect dinos thus far were uh, Loadon. We had Loadon. We had Antelosaurus. We had <laughs> Baskintonia. Uh, we had Tigersaurus, and our last one, this is a tough one. I, again, I'll spell it if you need to know. It is Joe Exoticus. Oh! <laughs> Joe Exoticus. Flip the table, no. <laughs> no, so you are correct. Joe Exoticus is not a dinosaur. You went eight for two. Uh, just, or again, Loadon, named for Jeff Lowe. Antelosaurus, named for Doc Antel, no. Baskintonia, named for Carol Baskin. And also Joe Exoticus, not dinosaurs. Uh, and you won. You got eight out of 10. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. All right. So Jada, what that means is you are now in line uh, to get to choose who plays when we don't have a very, very special guest. No, like we, Natty is still supposed to choose the next That's one. That's why I said she's in line. She's in line number two after Natty chooses. I know. Okay. It's hard. We have so many winners for this game. So winners. We need to send them real prizes. All right, so let's get into it. So today we are talking most- Wait, wait, I have something. Please. Why don't I just flip it on you and let's do shark or not a shark? R right now? Yes, right now. Let's go. Michael let's is go. excited about that idea. Bring it. Okay. Love it. okay. I didn't know this was gonna happen. This is the best surprise that's happened since I woke up this morning. Fantastic, okay. So I have some new sharks, some old sharks, and some not sharks. Um, we're going by genus name because common name is way too easy. Ooh. Oh. So number one. Wait, wait, wait. Do I just have to say if it's a shark or not a shark? Correct. Oh, I thought I had to say old, new, or not. No, 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 no. You just have to tell me if it actually existed or not. All right. Quick, before we get into this, people, all my friends in the Zoom room, please, I'm going to need thumbs up, thumbs down, head shakes, because I don't know a lot of sharks. I'm not a, a shark scientist. Uh, okay. All right. Jay, how many are there, by the way? Ten. Ten, and I have to get six. Yes. Yikes. Here we go. Okay, number one, stegostoma. I feel like you're trying to trick me because it's got a stego in there. I'm gonna, let me just take a quick perusing. Any, anyone give me a yes or no? Callie, Callie says yes, Chelsea says maybe. <laughs> I'm, Eric says yes, I'm going yes. Is it, a, is, is it a shark? It is a shark that is the genus that the zebra shark is in. Yes, nice, all right. Thanks guys, okay. I'm gonna keep using you for help. I got one, let's go. Procoptodon. No. Is that what you're going with? Uh, uh, mm, mm. <laughs> Let me look. Thumbs up, anyone? Thumbs up. Pravinoraptor says yes. Chelsea says no. Eric, I got a lot of, I'm going yes. I see a lot of friends saying yes. Well, you were right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the Procoptodon is like a prehistoric kangaroo, so. You on oh, that one. I know a Procoptodon. Oh. <laughs> I forgot okay. about Procoptodon. Uh, all right. Carcaridon. I bet Procoptodon was hunted by Thylacaleo, which is just fun to say. That is fun to say. That's a giant marsupial lion. Whew. I love okay, that. go ahead. Uh, Carcaridon. Carcaridon, yes. Correct, yes. Yeah. That's the genus that the Megalodon is in. There's a dinosaur called Carcarodontosaurus that means like shark tooth. So I knew, okay, cool. Oh, cool. I love that. That's yeah. nice. Edestis. Spell it, please. E D E S T U S. Um, could you use it in a sentence? Is Edestis a shark? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going yes. 
Yes, you are correct. It was the scissor toothed shark that lived about 300 million years ago. Okay, predating the dinos. Nice. Where, where am I at right now? Um, you have gotten three right and one wrong. Okay. You're doing good. Keep it wrong. We have so many sharks to talk about. Let's go. Number five, Centrophorus. <laughs> no, I'm trusting my co host, Christine. I'm going no. I'm going to go with no. Well, you were wrong. Christine. That is the genus of the dumb gulper shark. The, it's called the dumb gulper shark? Yes. That's just rude. Keep going. Okay. All right. <laughs> Maramusodon. <laughs> Maramusodon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't. Mm, yes. Yes. No. <laughs> That's inventive. I was like, I, I put like made. American Museum, Maramusodon for you. I like that. Okay. Bolodon. Spell it. B O L A D O N. No. Correct. That's bola is ball in Spanish. Okay. You cross Orinus. Yes. Correct. That is the genus of the Wobbegong shark. Duh. Everyone knows that. I love the Wobbegong. Okay. Where are we at? Uh, Where are we at? We're at number nine. Um, I think that you've already won. One, two, three, four, five. Just kidding. You need to get one more right. Okay. Number nine. Tetradicus. I, I think I know. I'm looking in the chat. Agus. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other... Eric, you've said yes to every single one. That's becoming not helpful. <laughs> uh, can you spell it? T-E-T-R-A-D-Y-C-U-S. Yeah, sure. Yes, it's a shark. Let's go. It is not a shark. I completely made that up. <laughs> so did, did I lose? Did I pass? You got one more and you have to get it right. <laughs> this is the last one. All right. Ready? Tychotus. P T Y C H O D U S, Tychotus. Yes. Correct. That was the Crusher Shark to live 85 million years ago. See, I knew that because it was alive during the time of dinos, obviously. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Wow. The, the script was flipped. Uh, I'm glad I didn't fail miserably. Jada, yeah. thank you thank for you. helping me. I've never played that. That was amazing. Awesome. This is also a good segue, Jada. So you are a shark expert for today. Um, you want to take it, take it away? Like, tell us a little bit about sharks. Um, Jada's going to tell us why they're awesome, a uh, slight bit about their evolutionary history, as well as some of your absolute favorites. I also, again, I'm not a shark person, but I took the time last night to look at some of my absolute favorites and learn a little more. So I have three of my faves I'm going to intersperse with you, Jada. But take it away, Jada. Hit us with your shark facts. Jada, okay. Justin, can we show the shark of the day one more time? Absolutely. Let me share that on the screen. For and the while we're showing it, Jada, someone has a question about the shark of the day. How does this tooth whirl work when eating or attacking? I'm not 100% sure, but from what, I've, from what I think, judging by this picture, um, it looks like it might kind of go, like prey might go into its mouth and it would bring its jaw up and kind of cut it in half and like split it into pieces that way. What and I then, read last night was similar to that. It's like they think they had harder either bone or cartilage on the top of its mouth and it like kind of crushed it that way. So yeah, that's what we think. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Ready? I'm ready. I'm going to okay. intersperse some, some pictures when you, when they seem fit, but go ahead. Awesome. So sharks are cartilaginous fishes. They're related to skates and rays and they're, Closely related to chimeras, we think that they evolved from chimeras. Those are like rat fishes, ghost sharks, things like that. Jada, real quick, when you say cartilaginous, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, I was just going to explain oh, that. Cart so <laughs> cartilaginous means that their skeleton is entirely made of cartilage. Um, sometimes bits and pieces of it can become calcified, so it's like bone. Um, and those pieces can kind of sometimes get um, found in the fossil record. But for the most part, we just have teeth because that was the hardest part of their body. Usually the cartilage just kind of disappeared over time and we've got teeth left and those have been fossilized. Um, but today we have more than 500 species of sharks. There's 
some that are 40 feet long, there's some that are seven inches long. So completely some super pelagic reef species, deep sea species, all kinds of crazy different things. And they're all crazy important to their environments too, because they're apex predators. So reef species can control like those mid-level predators so that they don't get totally out of control and destroy the reef ecosystem. Or um, some of them are even eaten by other animals like octopus or whales. Some sharks eat other sharks. Um, so that's all just kind of how important they are to their environment. And we have to make sure that they're there to be able to help their environment. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about shark attacks because everyone freaks out and thinks that they're going to get attacked by a shark every time they go in the water. But that's so overblown. The only time sharks attack is if they feel threatened, if a person looks like prey. So if you are on a surfboard, you could look like a seal or a sea turtle. Or they're like, what is that? I have no idea. So they'll come up to you and they'll bite you the way that like a dog would, but they just have way sharper teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, they only kill on average like four people a year. You're more likely to get killed by a lightning strike, a cow, a vending machine, a flying champagne cork, or a coconut getting dropped on your head. So the reality is that you have a very slim chance of getting attacked or killed by a shark, and they really shouldn't be anything that you're concerned about. Hippos kill 500 people a year. Hippos <laughs> are ruthless, man. The... Sharks are not that aggressive. They get such a bad name. Yeah. But a little bit about shark evolution. Um, so I think the earliest fossils we found are about 450 million years ago, so older than dinosaurs and definitely older than trees, which is... That like doesn't make sense to me, but it's the coolest thing ever. Um, like I said, most of their uh, fossils are just their teeth because cartilage just kind of withers away over time. But they've survived four of the five major mass extinctions. And we're not exactly sure why, but I think it's because, um, most likely because they're such efficient hunters. Um, and they ended up exploding after the late Devonian uh, mass extinction because that killed off 75% of all species on earth, including a lot of ocean species. So it freed up so many niches for these sharks to just explode in diversity and become the crazy things that they were. And then over time becoming the sharks that they are today. Um, and I just think that that's the coolest thing ever. And if that mass extinction never happened, we wouldn't have sharks the way that we have them today. So, Christina, As, Christina's a big stand of mass extinctions. We yes, I know. I know. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, the, late, the late Devonian mass extinction. Yes. Uh, approximately 360 million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Rattle off some facts. <laughs> <laughs> what are my thoughts on it? No, just you yeah. love, we were just mentioning that you love mass extinctions. Sharks have survived four of the five major ones. I'm just trying to recap what you just said, Jada. Sharks are around yeah. since about 450 million years ago. Trees were 380 million years. So, so sharks are predated mm. to the trees. They, that basic body plan clearly works because it has worked for 450 million years and they are still here today. It's Incredible. Pretty, pretty awesome. They are the coolest things ever. While we're paused, can I yeah. ask a clarifying question? Um, I got a question with some words that I heard earlier. Mm -hmm. If you can remind us what they mean. Um, so Arnav asked, Helicoprion is a chimera, isn't it? Not technically a shark, or is that interpretation outdated? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it was classified as a shark, but I know that there was some confusion with, confusion with earlier sharks because they were supposedly evolved from chimeras. Um, they're in different subclasses. Chimeras are in holocephali and sharks are in elasmobranchii. So they are very, very closely related. And I think that that's still kind of a thin line with earlier shark species. So I'm not 100% sure, but my guess was that they were considered sharks. Wikipedia says Helicoprion uh, is a fish-like shark or a shark-like fish. So yeah, I, they were too cool and looked too much like a shark not to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking oh. of, uh, wait, another one, Christina, are we good? Uh, I don't have any other questions. All right, Jada, should we get into some of our absolute favorite sharks? Yes, absolutely should. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to talk about three uh, that lived at the time of dinosaurs. These are not dinosaurs. Remember, di no dinosaur ever lived in water. So even things that look a little more dinosaur-like, marine reptiles, not dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, I think one of their major, well, one of the best adaptations they 
they evolved were legs that came straight down from under them that allowed them to move efficiently on land. So no dinosaur ever in water, but these sharks lived at the time of dinosaurs in the water, including uh, one of my favorites right here, which I want to start with this one because you guys, Stetha Stethacanthus, Stethacanthus was not giant, right? We have some sharks, for instance, that Helicoprian that went, we think, upwards of 30 feet long. This one, pretty small, not so big. And I also wanted to show you this because Christina always makes fun that I have this like Wikipedia side job as that shadowy model. Uh, for scale. Christina does it as well because no one can throw their hips quite like that. <laughs> right. So this is Christina and a Stethacanthus. Secrets Steph out. What? The secrets out. Right. So Stethacanthus actually predated dinosaurs. This is about 300 million years ago. Um, we think they're a pretty slow moving shark and that is because their dor dorsal fin basically looks like an anvil or an ironing board. Right, and that thing definitely would have had more drag in the water. Yeah, so it's both on the top of that dorsal fin and right, you'll see on the top of their heads, they have something called dermal denticles. Dermal, like derm is in skin, dent as in teeth. So it's, it's similar to the material in our teeth on the top of their heads and on the top of that dorsal fin. We're not exactly sure why. It may have been a sexual display, sexual selection type of thing. Not exactly sure. Just incredibly weird and crazy looking sharks, for sure. Um, well... Jada, do you want to, where, where did I put your sharks? Jada, do you want to hit us with some info about this guy? Who is this? Yes, so this is the salmon shark. They hunt salmon, as you could probably tell by the name. And they live in crazy cold water. But the cool thing about these guys is there's a group of sharks that are warm-blooded, not cold-blooded, which is crazy because fish are typically not warm-blooded. But these guys can raise their body temperature, like, I think it was something like 38 degrees Fahrenheit above the surrounding water temperature which is like unheard of for a fish but this guy can do that because it's got to be able to swim fast enough to catch its prey and survive in such a cold environment where do they live generally um i think you know i'm not 100 percent sure i want to say somewhere around like alaska but that could be totally incorrect <laughs> it is cold but honestly <laughs> i'm gonna look it up though so they're they're warm-blooded Yes, they are. Actually, I think all the shark species that I have that I'm talking about today are warm-blooded. Um, the great white shark is also warm-blooded. We've talked a little bit about uh, warm versus cold-blooded before. Um, I just want to mention again, it's not really a dichotomy. It's not like you either warm-blooded or cold-blooded. It's much more of a spectrum in nature with things right. falling along that spectrum. Uh, we think a lot of dinosaur species were somewhere actually in the middle. Cool. All right. Jumping back um, all the way to 125 million years ago, smack dab in the middle of dinosaur time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have evolved for the first time during the time of the dinosaurs, the frilled shark. This is a frilled shark. I should mention, but, uh, frilled sharks, as well as the next one we'll see, are still alive today. So they started at the time of dinosaurs about 125 million years ago. This guy swims pretty deep. We've seen them today, or at least ants are, um, we've seen, yeah, species of frilled shark about 5,000 feet deep, which is pretty crazy. They have this weird like eel-shaped body, right? And they're all, they get to about six feet long, which is pretty big. But the thing I want you guys to focus on here are definitely its teeth, like very weird looking teeth. In fact, they have 25 rows housing over 300 triangular teeth. And you can see they're very different than like you would imagine a big shark tooth from like a, a tiger shark or a great white shark looks like. And that is because these guys have adapted to eat almost entirely cephalopods. They'll eat other small sharks or other small fish, but they're mostly eating cephalopods like squid and octopus, uh, cuttlefish, that type of thing. So these types of teeth are perfect to catch and consume those guys. The other weird thing, or a couple other weird things about them, you'll see these uh, gill slits on the side. So they have six gill slits. And the first one, the one closest to its mouth, actually under its jaw connects. So it's actually almost like one giant gill slit there. And then the last five under don't actually connect. They're just ones on the side, which is pretty crazy. But that's not the craziest thing about them. We think, again, there's still more research because we're not positive, but we actually think that the frilled shark has the longest gestation period of any known vertebrae. Any guesses as to how long you think it takes for this guy, this guy, this lady to gestate and produce new baby sharks. Remember, humans are nine months. How long? I think elephants are like, like 24 months, a little bit over two years. Any guesses as to how long the frilled shark gestates? To make baby shark? 
do, 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 baby sharks. I was like, say. um, 36 months as a guest. He says two months as a guest. 60 months, 30 months, six years, four years. It's actually 300 years. No, um, <laughs> I think, I'm kidding. No, it's about 3.5 years. We think they gestate for about 3.5 years, which is an incredibly long amount of time, especially considered, generally speaking, your gestation period increases and tracks with body size somewhat. So these guys aren't that big. Uh, remember, they're only about six feet long. So three and a half years. <clears throat> which is just, that's the craziest thing I learned last night. Jada, hit us with your next shark, which is this one right here. I'm gonna share my screen. Jada, who is this? I can't see your screen. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Hit us with your next shark. shark. He is with the fastest shark in the entire ocean. Ba, ba, ba. So on average, they go- Wait, I missed I, the type. They, I'm sorry, I missed the type, is it? What is this? The shark, the short fin mako. The short fin mako. Okay, go ahead. There's also a long fin mako, but the long fin mako, I think their fins, because they're longer, produce a little bit more drag. So the short fin mako is faster. Mm -hmm. They are, um, they can go like bursts of speed up to like 45, 46 miles per hour. So like 72 kilometers per hour for those that use the metric system. America's weird. Um, <laughs> And they have like videos. I watch Shark Week all the time, obviously, because I'm obsessed with it. But they have videos of this boat with a camera on the back and fish like bait right behind it. And they're going like full speed. And you just see this Mako shark come out of literally the deep blue out of nowhere and just take a whole bunch of those fish and then just disappear. And I was like, how do you even get this kind of footage? Like, this is the coolest thing ever. And because they swim so fast, they can jump out of the water a solid 30 feet. When 30, they're hunting. Thir so they can come out, wow, 30 feet out of the yes. water. That's three basketball hoops stacked on top of each other. Yes. Do, like, do they do that often? Do we, is there a purpose for that? Like what's, or is it just um, so, like because the, the uh, my guess would be there's like fish near the surface and so they like grab and because the speed they have just takes them out of the water, is that? Yeah, so a lot of sharks, um, much like the great white shark hunt coming from the bottom um, because then its prey probably won't see it. Um, and if you go back to the picture of it, you can also see that they have this thing called counter shading where when they're in the water column, if you're looking down on top of them, the top is darker than the bottom. So if you're looking down, you can't see them as well. And if you're from the bottom looking up, their stomach is white so that you can't see it as well behind like the light. Great, great camo for sure. Question in the chat about yeah. Uh, this this 30 feet is it 30 feet up or 30 feet across up like straight up because they'll just come up this way going after whatever they're going after probably a big fish and they can just launch themselves because they're already going 45 miles per hour it's it looks like a missile and it acts like a missile like it's it's crazy is that the fastest thing that swims i don't believe that it is I think it's the seventh fastest. I saw there, there's like other billfish, like a like the like a swordfish or something like those kind of fish are a little bit faster. But these guys are up there for sure. Um, Jada on Instagram, we've got a question. How does that height compare to the way or the height that great whites can jump out of the water? I don't think that I've ever seen a great white jump higher I than seen that planet earth footage where it, like it's in slow mo and it comes out of the water and grabs a seal yeah but i don't think it's that high like they definitely don't go as high as mako's like they can get their full body length out of the water but usually they're like horizontal by that point they don't launch quite as far up because they can't get as much speed but they do breach out of the water cool thanks what kind of shark is this again? We have a question. Short fin mako. Short fin mako. Let me show this one more time. <clears throat> this is our short fin. How about how big, by the way? About how long? Um, I want to say around 15 feet. <laughs> that seems about right. A little yeah. more than basketball. Okay, cool. I have another question while we're here. Um, are shark fossils found on all continents? We found shark fossils all over the world, but the problem is it's mostly jaws and teeth, right? Because that's the hard bony stuff. The rest of the yes. body is cartilaginous. I mean, you have cartilage in your body, but uh, that breaks down way too easy. And so there are extremely rare preservation circumstances where we have more of the body or at least an impression of the body. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly teeth and some of the jaw, much like those tooth whorls we saw earlier. Cool. I tweeted yesterday that I was, I was bummed that I can't go anywhere. I live in the middle of the desert and I can't work with, with 
sea animals right now. And someone tweeted back to me, she goes, paleontologists can work with sea animals. In the <laughs> desert. And I was like, okay, you okay. don't need to show off. <laughs> Twitter is just one giant, well, actually, that's a whole other conversation. All right, moving back into the Mesozoic. Ladies and gentlemen, a shark that's alive today, uh, ancestor of this particular shark, but they first evolved at the time of the dinosaurs, 125 million years ago. This is how big it was or is even today. Uh, any guesses? You guys know the name of this particular shark. You'll see the little, um, the square under its face with the little arrow carrot looks different. The mouth looks different in that one. And I'll show you exactly why in a second. But do we have any guesses as to what shark this is? Uh, people are DMing me goblin shark. Yes, that is absolutely what it is. Uh, I think technically it's pronounced goblin. It's not, it's goblin. This is a goblin shark. <laughs> goblin. This is a goblin shark. Goblin sharks are bonkers looking, not only because of the mouth, which we'll get to in a second, but they're, they're pink. They have this like grayish pink color. So you think of most sharks as like that slate gray, uh, but they're more, way more pinky, pinky. <laughs> they also dive pretty deep, about 4,000 feet. They're pretty slow swimmers. And so we think they're more of an ambush predator and they look like this. Yikes. I, yeah, I'm seeing faces in the chat. Those, yeah, yes, all your face reactions are perfect. On Insta, if you do not know what a goblin shark is, look up goblin shark. This is what its face looks like. Here's another image of one. Yikes, McYikes and Steen. Do wow. they have to be so wet? Why they gotta be so wet? Uh, because they live in the ocean, Christina. You're a scientist, you should know this. They do look like they've seen some stuff okay. and gone through some stuff though. Uh, but we haven't gotten to the best part. So that jaw, if you notice in this first picture right here, the jaw is kind of back in its body. It almost looks like a normal shark, but when it comes time to eat and snatch something, that entire jaw extends out. It extends out like, I don't know, like a go-go gadget jaw to grab what it's about to eat. And luckily the internet never fails. It is undefeated. Here is a GIF. Hopefully this will play. Yeah, I'll let that loop a couple times because watch that again. The interesting thing is a lot of shark species do this. Okay. Like the great white shark, you can see when it's trying to bite at prey, it does this as well. But the goblin sharks is just so extreme that it terrifies people. And to answer Em's question earlier that she messaged to me, this is the weirdest looking shark that I can think of that's still alive today. <laughs> fair. Absolutely fair. It, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I, okay, I gotta stop watching that. That's freaking me out. So that is the goblin shark. <laughs> Don't worry, it's no threat to you whatsoever. Uh, They're right. species. So I think we got one more, Jada. You ready to share your last beautiful piece de resistance with respect to the shark? Bam, I love yeah. this guy. Look at the shape of this one. Let's go. What is this, Jada? This is a thresher shark and it's my favorite species of shark. Yeah. Because its tail makes up half the total length of its body. <laughs> as long as its whole body. Exactly, it's so cool. So there's three different species. There's the big eye, the common, and the pelagic thresher shark. Um, this is the second honestly, time you've said pelagic. What does pelagic mean? Pelagic means like open ocean. So you're not really close to a reef. You're not like deep water. You're just kind of like in the middle of the water column. So not out. you're like the beach. You're not like gonna see this near the beach. Right, exactly. Um, these guys are awesome because they use these crazy tails for hunting so they don't just chase down prey um and i feel like their hunting mode is more efficient though it might they might use more energy but in the end i think it's more efficient because what they do is they swim really really fast they turn their pectoral fins down stops them on a dime and they use their tail as a whip um and then it just like stuns or kills a whole bunch of fish that are in this big old bait ball group school of fish and then they can just slowly go through collecting all the things that are dead or not moving. And the reason I think this is more efficient from- did, Wait, did you say a fish int? You said a fish int, right? I sure did, Thank efficient. Okay. Um, because, because even though it's using more energy, most likely to whip that tail, it's getting a better payoff because it's, it's almost never gonna miss. Like there's so many fish in the area, it's gonna stun or kill something. Whereas a great white only has like a percentage of how often it actually catches a seal. It's wasting all this energy trying to catch it and never actually catches one. This one's probably going to be successful in catching prey more often than most other sharks. Say its name one more time. The thresher shark. Thresh, not thrash, but thresh. Thresh, yes. 
I used to think it was thrash because like you can think like the water being thrashed around. Yeah. Shark. So that actually brings something up like lots of sharks obviously have really cool adaptations uh, to capture, hunt and capture prey. What's the deal with the hammerhead? I've heard a lot of theories as to why it may have evolved the eyes on the side of the hammer. Is it for hunting, maneuverability? Like, do you, what's, what's the general prevailing thoughts on that? So there's a few different things. I think people are still trying to figure out exactly what the advantage is because there's like 11 different species and their head shapes are also different. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that part of it is definitely the fact that their, their nares, their nostrils are farther apart. They can get more olfactory information from like a larger area and it'll help them hone in on prey more accurately. And another theory is that because of their, their electroreception pores, called the ampullae of Lorenzini, are a little bit more spread out, so it might be able to hone in on that prey more accurately, kind of like the olfactory information. And another thing is that some, my nephew's crying, I'm so sorry. <laughs> some uh, hammerhead species eat benthic stingrays, like stingrays that lay on the bottom. So what they'll do is they'll pin it down with the side of its head, turn as fast as it can and bite off like the wing and then the stingray can't move and it's got an easy meal. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Cool way to hunt. I have a couple of questions yeah, we are, uh, about the thresher specifically. Christina, so it's just FYI, you guys, it's 1247, so we're nearing the end of our time. So yeah, let's do, let's do these questions as we look through. Uh, well, yeah, let's start hitting us with the questions. Okay, Shanna wants to know, does their tail ever stick out of the water like the shark fin we're used to seeing? I would imagine not so much. I think that it would kind of flop over. Flop. It's definitely still rigid, but I think that the dorsal fin is going to be more rigid and it might flop over a little bit. But I don't think we've seen them at the surface like that very often. Cool. As we uh, get more questions, I'm going to cycle through to see these amazing shark drawings. So please hold them up. Uh, again, please post these on Twitter, on Instagram, tag me. On Twitter, I'm Dustin Growick. Instagram, Dinosaur Whisperer. Here we go. Ooh, Randy. I like Randy. It's a good I it's a good name for a shark. Oh, look at this. We've got a rainbow. Jada, we've got a question from Instagram. Um for the salmon shark being warm blooded, can that help them catch their food? And how does being warm blooded make them faster? So if I like to think about it this way. If you're really, really cold, if your hands get really cold in the wintertime, it's hard to move your hands really fast, right? So I would imagine it's kind of like the same idea for a shark. It's really hard to whip their tail really fast, to move really fast, to catch their prey if they're really, really cold. So they have like this heated core that helps them stay warm so they can move faster to catch their prey. Jenna wants to know, uh, going back to a theme from a few days ago, the sound barrier, would this whip tail from the thresher also cause a loud sound? I would imagine it would not cause like a sonic boom type situation because it's got such it's got a thicker medium to go through like water is so much thicker than air I don't think that it would cause the same effect but I think that if you were to do it outside of water it could probably make a loud sound and Sasha is wondering what shark Jada would you most want to see out in the wild Ooh, good question that's a really good question um honestly I would take any of them but if I could see a great white I really want to go shark diving like without a cage with a great white shark because I'm crazy, but they're so, so cool. And they're not gonna attack you if you're not a threat. And they give you warning signs. Like they'll put their pectoral fins down and open their mouth more if they're like, hey, this is my space, you better get out of here. And then you know, so you got a warning, you'd be fine. Uh, as we get some last few questions, I'm gonna cycle through. I just wanna look at a bunch of these. We have a great drawing from Natty. This one's named Bitey. Bitey is a pretty good name. I believe Bitey might have actually been one of the squares on our bingo. He definitely was. Natty <laughs> Clever for getting him to say that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, we didn't hit a lot of bingo scores today because I don't think we talked so much about, I mean, I know we didn't talk so much about dinosaurs. So just, you know, Ohio, NYC, uh, the American Museum of Natural History. Uh, we've got Keisha and Daniel hit bingo. Okay, we'll get to that bingo in a sec. I want to look at some of these drawings real quick. These are beautiful. You guys love these every who, day. Who are you looking at? Give me a name. Lenosaurus. I mean, I'm just cycling through. Denise has got yeah, a Yeah, but you one. have to tell me who you're looking at so I can pull them up. <laughs> you can do that. Go ahead. Just click. It's not going to sync the way you think it is, Grace. It, it's all it, Okay. Chelsea. Uh, do you, I have drawing. a question. Margo's from, drawing. I have a question from Tyrannosaurus. Please. Do you th 
think that commercial shark diving contributes to conditioning of sharks that humans equal food? I've heard that theory. Curious to know what you think. I have also quick, heard on. that theory. Quick shouts to Inez, to Richard, to Jermaine and Abigail. You guys, these drawings are amazing. Ryan and Sydney, Yasmin, Anna Philippa. You guys, wow. Hugo, Alicia, oh, crushing these drawings today. Sorry, go ahead and answer that question and then we're going to go back to the bingo winner. I was going to say, I honestly don't think that I've done enough research on that specific topic to have a solid opinion. I think that it's definitely possible, but it's, it's hard to tell because you don't, you don't really know unless you've done a lot of research. And I feel like it would take a long time to get the, the data you need to be able to come to that conclusion. So I personally have not done my own personal research on it to really give a solid opinion, but I think that there's potentially something there and we should probably look more into that. Yeah. All right, it's 1251 for a quick recap. You guys, clearly we've been talking all about sharks today. It is Shark Saturday. Jada told us a lot about some amazing adaptations for survival. We have sharks that are warm blooded. They can raise their body temperature a ton to be able to survive. We have amazing adaptations for hunting like with the, uh, the tail of the thresher shark. We showed you some weird looking adaptations of sharks that evolved during the time of the dinosaurs like the goblin shark and the frilled shark. But I think the thing, the major takeaway is that sharks have been on this planet for 450 million years. It's longer than trees have been here. That basic body plan was so successful. Nature was like, we got a basic thing. We're going to go with this. And so they have survived four out of five major mass extinctions. And the only real threat to them now is us. And I think a lot of that is because of misconceptions that Jada talked about, about sharks being scary and hurting or hunting humans. Sharks kill five people around the world a year. Hippos kill 500 and the ones they do kill probably because people were messing with the shark, not the other way around. So sharks deserve our love and attention so they continue to be here however many million years in the future. Now, is, I'm not sure if my mom is still here to, as an option. Does anyone see my mom in the chat? Does she bounce? Christina, um, you know? She no might one? still be on Insta. Well, I don't see her here on, um, in the Zoom room. So our winner... Who is our bingo winner? Um, Keisha and Daniel. Let me find them. So because my mom's gone, Keisha and Daniel, you, can, right. choose, you can choose one or you can have Grace choose any area, hall, uh, exhibition space in the American Museum of Natural History. And I'll tell you a personal story or anecdote about it. So I'll let you choose. Either Grace can choose or you can choose. What do you choose? Uh, we don't know the halls of the museum. Yeah, we don't live in America. <laughs> well, I will say they have different environment, different areas of the world. You can even just pick it. What, what part of the world do you live in, by the way? Uh, Canada. You guys are in Canada. Okay. Yeah. There is no, there's no Canadian hall in. Well, there's Hall of North American Mammals. There is Hall of North American Mammals. Yeah. And Northwest Coast. And North, well, currently closed. Yeah, yes. What Canadian about South stuff. America? Okay, what about South America? Because our family is from Guyana. Oh my there, gosh, me there's, too. There's no Hall of South American Mammals. <laughs> that is okay. Um, what? Oh, I'm just, okay. But we have human stuff. It's, it's not the hall. Okay. We're going to defer to Grace. Grace, pick a hall. Pick a hall or an area. Um, well, let's go with, let's go with North American Mammals. And uh, why don't you well, tell also, us my mom about... just said, let me in. Why don't you tell us something about the um, giraffe diorama? In, oh, or no, sad. that's African mammals. Why that don't you tell sad. us about the um, um, wolf diorama? The wolf di Okay, that's good. In so one of the North dioramas America. at the American Museum of Natural History is in the Hall of North American Mammals. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff from Canada in there as well. Uh, yeah, I love the, the wolf diorama because it's really, really dark. And it's supposed to be dark because it's supposed to be midnight. Because every diorama you see in the Hall of North American Mammals and in uh, African Mammals is a specific place at a specific time. The idea was, this is before digital photography, I can't just go online and look up an animal. I can't just go and visit a place relatively easily. So how do we bring animals from places hundreds of miles away to people who have never seen them and never been to those places? And so they're all specific places at specific time. The wolves are supposed to be at midnight. It's the northern shores of a lake in Minnesota. Um, and the only light is supposed to be moonlight, right? Because it's midnight. So next time you go, go literally put your head on the glass and look up. You'll see a bank of blue lights, right? And that's what mimics the moonlight. 
but that's not actually what makes the shadows under the wolves. The wolves are running on what looks like snow. It's not actually snow. It's actually crushed marble. So the snow is made out of crushed marble and the darker shades under the wolves that look like shadows aren't shadows from the blue moonlight, but they're actually a slightly darker shade of crushed marble meticulously laid down to make it look like a shadow. When I say meticulously, I mean they had a dude who had a wooden plank that looked like a diving board leaning over the snow, the snow with a powdered sugar type sifter thing, slowly laying down layers of the darker marble to make the shadow. And plus the wolves look absolutely beautiful. They're amazing. That is one of my favorite dioramas in the museum. Thanks for bringing that one up, Grace. I, um, I dropped two links in the chat. One is um, about the diorama and one is a video showing what Dustin just described with the guy. Oh. There are some incredible artists who work mm -hmm. on the dioramas in the museum and this is just a great example of that. Nice. So we're about out of time. Our last couple of things I want to say. My mom just said, okay, Zoomer again because we wouldn't let her in the chat. She was late. Okay, Zoomer. Love it. If you guys want to support this endeavor, I greatly appreciate it. On Venmo, I'm Duff Dustin, Duffin? Dustin hyphen Groic. G-R-O-W-I-C-K. Um, yo, we did sharks today. Tomorrow, I've heard, again, I'm Jewish, so I've just heard this via the internet, that tomorrow's Easter, right? Uh, which I don't really understand because bunnies don't lay eggs. That's a whole other conversation. But speaking of Easter, speaking of eggs, you guys, we have an actual real dinosaur scientist who studies the molecular, molecular structure of dinosaur bones and dinosaur eggs coming to talk to us tomorrow about dinosaur eggs and all their coloration and variation and size and awesomeness. Uh, so I'm incredibly stoked about that. That is tomorrow. But until tomorrow at noon, same bad time, same bad channel, I don't care if you're using a toothpick to pick out your tooth whirl or simply eating Heroset. That's for you, Grace. That is a side for Passover, Seder. Uh, never stop digging. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Dinosaurs, eggs, Easter. Peace out. Thanks, Thanks Jada. Jada. Awesome. Huge shout to Jada. Everyone give huge shouts to Jada for telling us Jada. all our We love Jada. We love, love Jada. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, it's been great. Okay, Zoomer. <laughs> <laughs>